the mean streets of the internet because hey somebody's gotta do it and then we let you be the judge the jury and the executioner in the court of public opinion coming to you live from neo chicago i am officer kevin i'm officer grant what's going on grant don't ask (laughs) don't ask don't tell deal (laughs) let's give a quick thank you to our guest from last week Brian and Jim from Drink Beer and Play a Video Game. Thanks, guys. Round of applause, boys. Job well done. And the hits don't stop coming, Grant, because we have yet another brand new guest to the show, to the family, to the canon of the show. I'm talking about Jeremy Kaplowitz. Hey. How the hell are you, Jeremy? I'm I'm good. Thank you for having me. You guys uh you turned it on so quickly. I'm I'm impressed. <laughs> I I not to you know call you you know to to peek behind the curtain of this podcast, uh-huh. but before we're like, all right, let's start it up, you know, we'll do the podcast. It'll be like an hour, hour or so, and then you like quick record and it was like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I scare people like that to be honest. Like that. <laughs> that was good. They're it not expecting like, yeah. that switch to flip so quickly. It's, yeah, you uh, went to fucking full podcast mode. Podcast mode initiated. Yeah. yeah. No, you did it. It's good. So, Jeremy, uh, you are the editor in chief of mm-hmm. the hard drive, which yes. is a great website, great Thank account. You. you guys are really killing it with the articles. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like you guys, you guys have come a long way. I mean, you guys, you've been around for a while and I feel like just the, the, God, it, it, as soon as something breaks, you guys have like a really funny take on something or just like the perfect angle on it. And I'm consistently impressed, especially like, you know, lately. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, one of the biggest compliments that we get in the comment section of our articles is like whenever we run a topical article and we like rush it out and do it as fast as we can. And we just get like a ton of comments that are like, you guys were waiting for this one. Like you wrote this a month ago. And we're like, nope, we just, <laughs> we did it quickly. <laughs> but it's always cool. When people like assume we must have planned it. No, it's it's really impressive, man. Like, I mean, I've been on this, the same side of that at one point. I used to like be an assistant at the onion and just, mm-hmm. You know, those guys would have like a calendar and events and they would constantly be refreshing and, you know, making sure they had, you know, stuff in the backlog or, you know, be ready to have something going. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you guys are like absolutely just crushing it, you know, in terms of like, God, there was one you had recently about uh, Bernie shouldn't have dropped. I'm I'm butchering the headline, but it was like Bernie shouldn't have dropped out because he could have got the uh, the bonus stars, the bonus star (laughs) in Mario Party, (laughs) which is like right a very valid point too. I mean, if he's collected enough coins or hit enough blue spots, he definitely could have got a few more delegates. I think to quote uh, uh, CJ Hernandez, the writer of that article, who's a really funny stand-up comedian from Florida, he he had a joke in that that was like. the 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 dnc thinks that you know joe biden is the luigi of the race and he can win by doing nothing but like blah blah blah. it was very funny (laughs) uh yeah i think one of the things with like hard drive versus the onion is that since we're so diy i mean like most of hard drive was just like me writing articles or editing other people's articles like while at my day job so we don't have to like go through the the bureaucracy of like the onion which i'm sure is like pretty quick but we don't have like you know the photo guy is me the editor guy Mm -hmm. is me like it's just kind of like quicker and how long is the uh how long has the hard drive been around um as sort of its own uh partition of the hard times so the hard times was i think is now five years old and hard drive will be three in june congratulations thanks 
Yeah, I think before before um, I was familiar with you as a person and you as a creator, I, w- uh, I was more familiar with the hard drive mm-hmm. and with the Ace Watkins uh, presidential campaign, yes. as I'm sure everyone who listens to this show is familiar with. But I think the one thing that uh, sort of made, made me realize who you are was your uh, your halloween set where you did jerry seinfeld doing stand-up talking about his 17 year old girlfriend and i was like oh this is this guy that was well, like one of my favorite that and the dimitri martin shkreli oh, thank you. Uh, sets are like two of my favorite stand-up like bits like that of all time i, I think we actually played the seinfeld bit one on this show like a, a while ago after you'd done it. Oh, cool. We did, yeah. You, Jeremy, you got our coveted key to the city segment <laughs> one episode. <laughs> I, will, I will use that to unlock the city. Uh, yeah, that show's really fun. <laughs> it's a yearly... I think they've done it like 13 years in a row or something. Uh, it's called mm-hmm. Shticker Treat and every, ho- every Halloween it's like hosted by like Mark Normand. They do like... Uh, all the comedians do like two minutes of like another comedian set and then like I think it started off with just like, you know, one guy was like, I'm going to be Anthony Jeselnik. And then he would do like two minutes of Anthony Jeselnik jokes. And then like every year it's uh-huh. gotten like more and more involved with people doing like whole things. And last year, like they had like Mark Marin interviewing the Joker and all this crap. And it's been really fun. I don't know. It's cool. That's great. Yeah. Anyway, you should check out other videos from that show, the sticker treat. Like there's some really funny ones. I, I think like, yeah, someone did like, um, uh, uh Bernie Mac Sanders, Oh boy, I gotta uh, see that. Oh god, or, that or rules. Something like that. It's very funny. Um, there's a whole bunch of really great ones on that. I, I think like Nick Fatter had a really funny one of like a few years ago of like a modern uh, Charlie Chaplin where he's like trying to plug in his his iPhone uh, headphones and it's just like really well done. A lot of cool stuff like that. That's fucking great, man. Each of those, I, I can just like imagine it in my head, but I feel like a lot of stuff like that, the conceptualization that people take it to a certain level is mm-hmm. just like so impressive. Yeah, it's really fun. I love those kind of like challenge shows when they go well. It sucks when you do a stand-up show where it's like you write a whole new set for this one show you can never use again and then like three people show up. But when like there's a whole audience and stuff, it's really fun. Right. And then uh, like a lot of those videos that you'd done had gone, you know, somewhat viral too. So yeah. that's got to be a pretty yeah, nice I can't payoff. Complain. I can't complain about that. Yeah. How long have you been doing stand-up for? And like uh, when did you start getting involved with the hard drive and the hard times? Uh, I started doing stand-up in college um, pretty irregularly when I was like 18. I want to say that was like 2000, like 12 or 13. Um, and just doing like college stand-up, which I don't know if you guys did stand-up when you were in college, but it's like not real. It's like a weird, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like very easy and everyone's nice to you and all all, all the audience members, members are your friends and they all have the exact same life experience as you. So it's like... You kill all the time. It sounds like an open mic. Yeah, well, it's like it's like the Truman Show of comedy, where it's like everything's going <laughs> great. Uh, and then I, you know, graduated from college and had to completely start over in New York. But um, so I've been doing stand up a long time, considering all of that. But then uh, I was writing for the Hard Times, just like articles for the Hard Times in like the fall of 2016, and I had this website called uh, Wizard People of New York, which was like. Basically, I would take um, I would take photos from humans of New York, and I would change the captions to be like uh, you know lizard, like reptilian lizard people or whatever. And um, yeah, I actually I remember that website. I yeah. didn't know that you were behind that. I remembered seeing those a long time ago. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, it was like a it's something I was like doing in college or whatever, and we wanted to expand it, so we made this website with the hard times like we were just like shooting the shit me and one of the other lizard people people and matt Sangcom who runs the hard times and we were like what if we start like a joint project that's like an alt-right like a satire of the alt-right where it's like we have our own alex jones and he's like a crazy person and we run all the website articles like through lizard people but the hard times is like you like it's their media and it was mm. called truth bang and um it ran for like two months and it was a huge failure and no one read it because it was just like too insane and a bunch of people would come up to us and be like yeah i really like truth Bang, but i will never share it on my website on my facebook because like it's insane <laughs> so yeah. um after that ended matt who runs the hard times was like do you guys want to do like a more successful thing because <laughs> i want to make a video game website and then we we started that up 
Uh, yeah, speaking of uh, video game content in general, you also have your own podcast, the Super mm-hmm. Mario Brothers Super Show Show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have two podcasts on the hard drive thing. We got that and I do, we have an Ace Watkins podcast. So yeah, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. I remember seeing that as a kid on PAX, I think, for Mm -hmm. some reason. And uh, not not the most consistent cartoon I've ever seen. Pretty bad. Pretty bad (laughs) cartoon. Uh, Yeah, my friend and I, Mark, uh, we just were like, wanted to start a podcast for Hard Times, the Hard Times, and we... I don't know, decided we had never, we had, neither of us had seen the show before. So we've been watching every episode of it in order, um, mm-hmm. for the podcast. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's not, it's not a good show, but, um, we, <laughs> we try not to like shit on, we try to like take it for what it is. And like, we've been trying to rate every episode, like on a scale from one to 10 based on like what we feel like is fair to the, you know, the whole show. Like, what is this on the, the scale of, you know, this awful show? Um, but it's it's pretty bad. <laughs> Fantanoing it. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of uh, speaking of Ace Watkins, though, uh, that really has blown up. I I think I was reading an article that said Ace Watkins had like a higher Twitter follower count than uh, I think John Delaney, <laughs> like a, an an actual guy that's running for Let's see, office yeah. or was <laughs> running for office. Uh, yeah, John Delaney. Do you want to talk about that at all? Like that's that's <laughs> like. To see to see that sort of catapult into the stratosphere the way that it did, and for that to you know, uh, yeah, it was definitely not what we expected. Uh, we we do like so many dumb like shit posts on our website that like we just mm-hmm. assumed it would be another thing. Like I don't know, if you probably haven't heard of it, but like another thing that we tried before Ace Watkins was Raytheon Gaming, where we did like a fake branded video game account made by Raytheon, and uh, it was like banned immediately. Um, so like (laughs) we do like all sorts of dumb shit. So we were like, I don't know. What if he's a gamer president guy? And then like the first day it was like 50,000 followers and we're like, Oh, I guess that works. Holy shit. People were really into it. It was very cool. That's amazing. The guy who runs the hard times and not to blow up his body. He's a very, he's a great, you know, collaborator and person, but he, um, was like, guys, you have to tell me when you launch like major editorial decisions. And we were like, we thought it was like a tweet. Like we didn't know (laughs) (laughs) that it was going to be a thing. We thought we would tweet out like when I'm president, I'll make Fortnite legal. Like we didn't know it was going to (laughs) be popular, but it was very cool. That's hilarious. That's that's so friggin' insane because I I feel like we've had similar ideas where it, like not not along those lines but yeah I mean there there's so much nowadays where it's we'll make a video and we we joke about like oh Donald Trump's gonna make anime illegal and it's like yeah that, yeah that shit never goes anywhere you never have the expectation that you know this is gonna turn into anything but for that to be an overnight right sensation and to, to to get like the amount of accolades you've been getting for it has been, I yeah, mean, astounding. It's been weird. It's also like, and then on the other side of it, you know, you'll work really, really hard on something and you're like, this is the ticket for me. Like, this is my big project. This is going to be like, what? Right. I'm going to tattoo this logo on my body in 10 years. And, uh, and then it gets like 20, 20 likes. <laughs> weird how that always kind of works yeah. out that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving along here, though, we got a little bit of our own housekeeping. Uh, we've been streaming more on Twitch at twitch.tv slash thought cops. Uh, just all sorts of things, whatever we feel like doing during these uh, quarantine times. Keep people company. Any of our listeners want to come hang out, be in the chat, playing some Mario Maker levels people send to us. You know, we're ranking stuff on our tier rankings, uh, serials, Nickelodeon shows, fast food restaurants whatever you know whatever we feel like delivering the definitive opinion on check us out give us a follow give us a subscription if you feel like it twitch.tv slash thought cops i think this weekend we should also um like maybe saturday or sunday we should do a bonus episode so if you're interested in the bonus episodes uh $2 $2 a month on Patreon, patreon.com slash thought cops. And you get to listen to all our episodes of fire bros. It will be reviewing some different content, whether or not it's safe for public consumption. We got a, we got a few interesting items on the next episode. So definitely stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then you'll get access to all the current episodes as well. It's definitely a different flavor from the regular show. And we have uh, some of our friends on the show. Uh, Nico has been on a few 
Uh, Witten was on one. Uh, our friend Josh has been on a few. It's a good time. But uh, moving right along, let's get to our very famous, very favorite segment of the show, Two Minutes of Hate, where we like to blanket punish all these irritating things that we see online. They bug us, they annoy us, they get it under our skin for crying out loud. So, my Two Minutes of Hate this week, uh, I'm actually surprised it's taken me this long to think of this one, because this is something that... Uh, I have questioned myself if this is rude to say or not. Uh, you know, people are always sharing funny things. I think a lot of, like, modern society or whatever you have it uh, is, hey, you know, here's something funny I saw on the internet, whether it's a meme or an article or a tweet. Hey, here's something funny. I'm going to DM it to you. And a lot of people's, you know, friendships, relationships kind of almost exclusively exist within that realm of sharing content with each other. Right. And uh, I, I feel like sometimes when someone sends me one, I don't know if it's appropriate to just laugh at it or to be like, oh, yeah, I've already seen that. Because I think my in, my first instinct is like, I want to say like, oh, I've already seen that being like, oh, yeah, hey, we're on the same page. We like the same, you know, we're, we're, on, we're thinking the same way. But I feel like I almost wonder, like, is that rude to do? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the question is, do you, uh, if you don't do that, do you then have to fake it and be like, oh, this is great. And then like, pretend you're like watching this video. Right. That would be, that would be a horrible experience. And I feel like people would see right through it. Mm -hmm. so, if it's like a 10 minute video, like oh every God. two minutes you have to be like, and that's also a good, I like that part, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> you gotta like, you know, time it what, right. Right, that's a fucking nightmare. Yeah, what's this show called again? Tim and Eric? Yeah, no, it's hilarious. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Oh, Tame? <laughs> that's crazy, man. I mean, I, th I think I think you're okay in saying that. I think you, in order to make it not rude, you just have to add to it. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. if someone shows uh, yeah, you something that's funny. There. Yeah, if someone shows you that's something that's funny and you go, oh, I've seen that already. They're going to be like, well, fuck you. But if, if you're like, oh, I've seen that. Have you seen this episode? I think they'll be like, oh, no, I haven't, you know, sort of thing. So, But I've also had like, you know, someone will send me, you know, they'll DM me a tweet and I'm like, oh, hey, I was going to send this to you earlier. You know, hey, I was thinking of you or hey, I, I right. also thought you'd appreciate this. So I, I don't know if it's like this is like not actually a conversation I've ever verbalized. So I'm, I'm just curious what you guys think if this is like. Is it rude just to say like, oh, yeah, like even if you say like, ha ha or whatever, is it rude to say like, I've already seen that or you just have to fake it? You know, I'm going to take a hard stance. I'm going to say it's rude to not do the research and see if that person already saw it. You know, if I see a tweet, I'm going to go through every like and make sure that you weren't the one who already liked it before uh, I send it over. Okay. Just like put it on them. Be like, how dare you send that to me? Right, like I clearly right. retweeted that. <laughs> Yeah, I like this on Tuesday. Where the fuck were you? Yeah. Pathetic. Yeah, you should be scrolling my likes tab on the daily before you <laughs> send me a single thing. <laughs> right. I think that's a yeah, I think that's a good that's a good yeah. like punishment yes. actually. Oh, yeah. My this likes is on tab you. is a yeah. curated list of content. Right. Don't talk to me until I've had my <laughs> coffee or until you scroll my likes tab. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Fair uh, enough. Jeremy, do you have anything bugging you? Any, any two minutes of hate you want to get off your chest here? Somewhere? Sure. I'm sure you guys have done this one before. And you know what? I'm going to be... It's a hypocritical one because it's something that I do every now and then. And there's a lot of people who do it who I respect greatly. But I think just like as a whole, I'm done with front-facing comedy videos. Ah, uh, we actually... We haven't really covered this in the general sense. I'm done with it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. If your video relies on editing like snappy editing then I'm, i don't want it you know what i mean i mean obviously that's yeah. like way too big of a of a, i don't like good editing is not what i'm trying to say but like <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> if your video is like just like a bunch of sentences that are like people say this and it's like you know my new character is the guy who is, is you know says things that people say all the time and then you just like cut a bunch of things together i don't want it i know exactly what you're talking about and this is the kind of content that is absolutely huge on mm -hmm. twitter it's very like, popular yeah. a lot of people very greatly respect make it and uh 
I don't want it anymore. Yeah, I, I, uh, some of the stuff does impress me where it's like, oh, there's a lot of like snappy uh, observations and takes in there, but it's just like, did, did TikTok ruin this? I, I, I feel like TikTok was a big proponent in ruining mm-hmm. this. There's a few I people, like t- I think, who just have done it well enough. Like, you know, you go to like Eva Victor or whatever and like she did it really well and then like Comedy Central gave her money to put like their logo at the bottom of her videos. So now like every comedian in the world is doing the like things moms say and it's like, all right, we yeah. don't we don't need that. I feel like it probably just hit a point of critical mass with TikTok. I, don't, I think it was present before, but I think once TikTok started capitaliz- capitalizing on it the way that it has, it's it's become it's become an out of control monster. Yeah, <laughs> it's too much. And speaking of that, we'll we'll be talking about that a little more later. Um, but yeah, did you have a, did you have a punishment for any of these uh, this overabundancy of front facing comedy videos? Um, I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. I, it's just, it's a, it's a, I'm done. I just want people to know that I don't like it <laughs> and I want people to, to clip this and I want them to, to reply to me when I inevitably post one. To prove I say that. go for it. Yeah. Click, <laughs> go ahead and clip this. Uh, but I think, I think a good punishment would be, um, yeah, wait, went on me would be just the other, just use the other camera. So it's like the same stuff, but you're walking around, but we don't have to see your face, you know? Yeah, that's I want, fair. Like, I want some good old fashioned uh, POV <laughs> content, you know? Yeah. I want to see you walking around the mall <laughs> yeah. talking about whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Make the same exact video, but show me for some reason your bedroom wall. Uh, just use exactly. the wrong, <laughs> press accidentally <laughs> flip the camera. And I just want cuts, hard, quick jump cuts of different parts of your apartment that you're trapped in with your significant <laughs> other. I want to see, see the fight in the poster on the wall. Yeah, I want to <laughs> see in like 20 feet in the background your girlfriend rolling her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's what I want. Give me the realism. I want to be in their head, you know? Mm. I want to I want to see the world through their wonderful eyes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Grant, what do you got for us? All right. This is also going to be a little bit hypocritical because this is almost basically the entire crux of this show is us making fun of like just dumb shit, you know, especially this segment. Of course. And and I I get it to a certain point where it's like, yeah, it, there's a little bit of nuance regarding certain things that we criticize and the way that we criticize and why we criticize them. I do feel like since... You know, it's been, I, for me, tomorrow strikes a month that I've been at home doing absolutely nothing. I I lost my job exactly a month ago, St. Patrick's Day last, last month. Um, and, you know, there's, it's been difficult for everyone and everyone's just sort of sitting around like shrugging their shoulders going, I, I don't know, I don't know what to do. And it it's like we're all in the same boat of just shitty fucking social distancing and whatever and it, it to the point where it's it's getting tiresome to sort of talk about it but uh, it's what's affecting everyone and i think the the thing that's sorting sort of starting to bug me is the absolute negativity towards people's basic like coping mechanisms you know <laughs> regarding it this yeah. is hypocritical you're right <laughs> it is, but it, it's from the point of view of like, hey, this bothers me because of this, or this bothers me because of this. This is just like, like there's this trend of people baking bread because they're oh, like, I have nothing yeah. to do. I'm going to, I'm going to bake a giant loaf of sourdough. And then someone will retweet it and just say, I fucking hate this. <laughs> and it's like, I hate it too, but like, we're missing the basic foundation of like sociality to be able to, Mm-hmm. show our friends and relatives this it's like you just tweet it and you put it on the internet and it's like this is the most interaction i'm gonna get all day or people that uh especially women that like they cut bangs they're like i don't know what else to do i'm gonna cut bangs for myself or men uh, that are like i'm gonna do a stupid i'm gonna cut myself a mohawk or whatever <laughs> and people are like this is stupid you could have done this at any point and it's like yeah <laughs> but like i'm i'm destroying my mind with complete boredom right now like you know or uh 
people doing stupid dances or TikTok shit or whatever. It's just like, yeah, just let him do. If anything, this is the one time in history where it's like, yeah, just go ahead, bake a loaf of bread, cut yourself some bangs, and do a stupid dance on TikTok. <laughs> why did like? Why does that upset people so much? And so, I get it because I've been on the other end of it where I've been getting upset about this stuff. But it's like this is this should be the exception, right? Grant, may I ask, uh, are you just are you just saying? Uh, Shh, let people enjoy things. <laughs> this this one time, yes, I am saying that. Because I think that there's a there's a difference in like, yeah, sometimes people do things and they're doing it just to sort of be showy offy. Mm -hmm. I think right now people are just trying to deal with the fact that reality fucking blows right now and you have no other outlet, you know? Yeah. To bake some fucking bread. I feel like yeah. we're, we're going back to caveman times. Like, it's only a matter of time before it's like <laughs> TikToks are like, look, I made a fire. <laughs> Put two sticks together, I've, made fire. Yeah, that I've is I've been true. seeing a lot of people's Instagram stories where they're like growing their own vegetables and stuff like that. So, yeah. it's, it, we are getting close <laughs> to it. Yeah. Yeah. Now that we have nothing to do, humans have just like devolved into like being impressed <laughs> with what we can pull off. It's like, did you know my body could do that? Like, <laughs> I could make bread. <laughs> did you know we were capable of this? So, Grant, are, are we punished for this? I know you said it's hypocritical. It's hypocritical in a sense, but I'm seeing more, you know, just just from the uh, the contrarian side of people who just like to hate everything. And yeah. I, again, I know that that's kind of me, but, you know, like you got to have a little bit of levity in these situations. So uh, I don't know if, if you don't let people enjoy things, uh, you get all of the enjoyment sucked out of your life. I think is the punishment is that just if. Someone making bread pisses you off so much, then you just get no joy yeah. from anything. Yeah. That's fair. There's got to be an attitude to it. If you're getting mad at people making bread, it's like yeah. you got to like get your shit together. But if you like, maybe if you make, if you're making a joke about like the trend of people making bread, like you're probably not, it's you're okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got to be a couple layers removed. Yeah. Uh, moving right along, though, if you haven't listened to Thought Cops before, every week we investigate the Internet's outrage-inducing news stories, and then we sentence each perpetrator to a cruel and often quite unusual punishment. Grant, we got a lot of good stuff this week. Where would you like to begin? Oh, man, I feel like this week kind of sucks for, for content. You think but, so? Uh, I, I'm looking at the list right now. I feel like we got a lot of good... Uh, let's start with this Disney Plus thing. Yeah, there's sort of two stories combined into one with this, but, uh, you know, since everyone is stuck indoors and the only thing that there is to do is to entertain yourself, um, a lot of people have been watching, you know, Disney Plus and Netflix and all these different things, but Disney seems to have a history of editing out things that they don't like or pretending that, uh, what's it called, Song of the South doesn't exist. Uh, mm -hmm. They have a history of doing this type of stuff. And if you guys are familiar with the 1984 movie Splash with a young Tom Hanks, um, he watches a beautiful mer naked mermaid run off into the ocean from which she came, but they edit out her ass by uh, CGIing her hair to be longer. Did you see this? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's it's real wacky looking. Yeah, that's it. It doesn't look. Correct. Kevin, have yeah, you seen this? Yeah, what the fuck? It, yeah, uh, holy shit. I'm looking at it right now. It's just like, I'm, I got a freeze frame on the image here. It's very weird. It's like, it's like a blonde, glitchy blob over her ass. <laughs> it's definitely weirder than just a butt. You're right. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> I mean, this is, I mean, this is, a, you know, this is upsetting. I. I it's like... Yeah, and there's some other pull quotes from the article here saying the company has removed the word fuck from <laughs> movies like Adventures in Babysitting and Free Solo. That's so weird. That's very odd. And There's a on. comment on Twitter where someone says that apparently Disney recently put out a new Blu-ray of uh, Princess Mononoke, which I don't know if you've seen that movie, but like... Oh, yeah. There's mm -hmm. a guy who, like, shoots a bow and arrow and, like, pops people's heads off in that. But I guess, like, you know, there's no butt in it, so. Right. Yeah. Wait, did they, did they keep that in there? Uh, the I, haven't, I haven't seen the Blu-ray. I mean, it's not on Disney+. Plus. Because I have a very specific memory of that movie. Because, like, I remember 
like when I was a kid, I had only seen like Pokemon and like some mm-hmm. DBZ, like when I was like seven years old. It's like back in like the late nineties. And uh my mom took my brother and I to go see Prin- like Princess Mononoke. I had no idea what it was. And just that scene of him like shooting off a guy's like two arms with a yeah, bow and arrow, yeah, yeah. I was like, Oh That's my like I have never seen anything like this. It like awakened <laughs> a something in me. It's not quite right. Pokemon. Exactly. Um, but I mean, I feel, go ahead. I feel like this sort of, this trends on almost very similar territory to what we were talking about last week with the, uh, the Resident Evil, what was it? Two or three remake where you couldn't see up. Uh, I think her name is Jill's skirt. Yeah. And I, I, I made the point that it's like, yeah, uh, you know, it, this isn't pornography. Go to Pornhub if you want to jerk off, you know. But at mm-hmm. the same time, like, there is a weird... Like, yeah, it, we're perfectly fine having gratuitous violence in movies, but you show the smallest bit of, like, non-sexual nudity at all and people get up in arms and it's this weird cultural thing that we can't get over the fact that, like, yeah, people have corporeal bodies and... This is what they look like. Why is this offensive? And, you know, uh, companies like Disney and stuff go, you know, hand over foot to delete this stuff as if mm-hmm. it's going to corrupt, you know, a, a child to, to see a, a, a butt. <laughs> now, you know? to be fair, to play devil's advocate, the character in Splash isn't a human. She is a mermaid. So we don't know that she has a butt. She could, you know, in the canon of Splash, have a weird uh, hairy blob over her butt. You see, that's what I was right. expecting to see here. Like, I've never seen this film, so I, I thought that's I what it either. was. And you said yeah, to say. I, I don't know too many people, I think, that <laughs> have seen this movie, to be yeah, completely honest. The article does say that there are other movies where butts have not been censored. It says uh, Thor Ragnarok includes a scene with Hulk's butt <laughs> that was not censored. So if you're in a big... Gr- I feel like so much of the Marvel movies like are censored around big colored asses. <laughs> Like Hulk's green ass or Thanos' big purple ass. And it's like, yeah. at, you know, at the very least, I guess they're giving that to us. Thank well, there's, God, there's the scene. There's the scene in, um, what's the, the Looney Tunes movie with Michael Jordan? Why can't, uh, Space Jam, Space where Jam. like, uh, <laughs> how did you not one, remember that? <laughs> I don't, because I'm, you know, I'm tired. I just woke up from a nap before I recorded this. Uh. Um, in Space Jam, there's the one scene where one of the big dudes is, uh, dribbling down the court and someone pulls his pants down. It's got a giant colorful ass. I don't know if that's Disney, but I remember it. It's definitely not, but in a matter <laughs> in, in a matter of in a matter of several years it could be. It, right. If they put that on it, Disney Plus, they'll just blur all of Lola Bunny in case any kids get too turned on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, we hey, we've seen what happened with uh what that movie did to the, you know, the advent of the furry generation. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, this is like I don't know. Like I, I haven't seen this movie, but it's like, I, I don't, it'd be one thing if it was like, oh, these are just the movies that Disney made, whatever the case. But now that Disney owns so many things, this, you know, the implications are much larger where it's like, right. And some of these movies, like I, I this, this, this seems, I, I, again, I don't really know much about this movie, but I think this is probably a kid's movie if I had to guess. Well, in the article, it says it was rated PG because it, by the time, at the time that they had created the movie, PG-13 wasn't a rating that existed. Yeah, I was going to say in the 80s, you could like stab someone and say the word fuck 13 times and it would still be rated right. thir- or, uh, PG. Well, yeah. because PG just meant parental guidance. Yeah. So, so long as you had a parent there, you could put basically anything into a movie. Do we have to have like a PG fourteen, PG fifteen, PG sixteen, <laughs> just to be I mean, safe? You know, something a thir- a thirteen year old can see certain things, or a fifteen year old can see certain things a thirteen year old couldn't see. For example, uh, that being a mermaid's ass. <laughs> Yeah. I would hate to get into the whole uh, age of uh, visual consent argument on this show. I feel like that's not a route I would want to go down. Yeah, let's not bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, let's uh, we got we got to think of a punishment here. Uh, uh, great, I think Disney, go- Oh, go ahead, Jeremy. Go I have ahead. one. I have one. I think Disney should have to go back and Photoshop all of the butts uh, in all of their movies to be boobs. 
That's perfect. <laughs> so it's an easy fix, dude. I, they should have just, you know, had kept the hair the same length. They just put a couple of uh, nipples on her ass. Yeah, there you go. Feels more appropriate. Yeah. It's, I say so. You know, it's, it's confusing. It, it's an artistic It'll just throw choice. them off. <laughs> they won't know Definitely. what to say. Like, all these kids are going to come up with these movies and, like, they're going to see someone naked for the first time and they're going to be like, whoa, what the hell is <laughs> happening here? Where are your I mean, butt the nipples? Thing with that, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> the thing with that is, uh, yeah, it's not based in reality, so that would be... It's like, well, it's not like we're covering up anything that's realistic. You know, it's unrealistic, so you just leave it in there, right? Yeah. She's a mermaid. Well, so I guess a uh, uh, there's a second story that's sort of tangentially related to this one, um, which is they did the same thing, I guess, with Lilo and Stitch. Um, they there's an episode. There's an episode. There's a uh, <laughs> there's a scene in Lilo and Stitch where Lilo is running for, running around the house trying to hide from her older sister, and she hides in the laundry uh, in the in the dryer, and they edited it. To make it look like the dryer is no longer a dryer. It's a table with a pizza box covering it. Hmm. Do they like think kids are gonna accidentally hide in dryers? Wait, yeah, what the I'm looking at the I'm looking at the pic this is weird, man. <laughs> it looks nothing like it doesn't look yeah, it doesn't look realistic. I'm assuming that's the yeah, they're they're probably thinking kids are going to see this and think that that's a fun place to hide, and yeah, of course that's dangerous, but like it it doesn't look correct. It doesn't look good. Yeah, I don't know what that. Yeah, it's not a real. <laughs> I got. It's very weird. <laughs> That's yeah. the second time they've done that too, right? Because I mean, I guess before it right. came out, they had to famously edit out like the nine eleven scene or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which Wait, I mean, so hold on sense. a second. Let me get let me get this straight. It's safe. Originally, to... Stitch did nine eleven. Sorry, what were you saying? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are conspiracy theorists to support that. Uh, but no, let me get this straight. So they're saying that it's safer to crawl into a pizza oven than a clothes dryer? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. This yeah. seems much, wor- much, much worse. Well, it's just, it's like an end table and she's hiding with the pizza box, which why is that in your laundry room? Uh, to me, it looks like a, an oven. Also, they, I don't know why, but they edited, oh, no, never mind. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Never mind. D- d- don't listen to anything I've ever said. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, it, it, it is just like a real strange overreach that's like, I, I don't know, like times change and whatever, but I mean, this isn't, out of all the things that they can change or take out of movies or whatever, it's just like they're nitpicking about the stupidest stuff and it's just like, yeah, it. I don't know. I I'm too angry at this to even construct a <laughs> real sentence. To be completely honest, it's like I I don't know why you would even focus on this. Yeah, I bet you some executive was just like, well, you know, some kid's gonna jump into their dryer and it's gonna be in the news. They're gonna blame us, so we gotta make it look like a uh, random wooden crate that has a uh, pizza box for an opening because no one can climb into that. Right. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> I mean. This movie is 20 years old, so you would think if they haven't gotten any lawsuits from kids dying in dryers that were attributable to Disney, like, why would you do it? Like yeah, That we know of, of course. That we know right. of, exactly, but... Yeah, we don't have the NDAs. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, Little Slime in the chat here says, it looks like she's getting in an oven, which is much more offensive, and he's right. It yeah, definitely usually doesn't look like a don't... table. Yeah, I don't... It's like a... I don't know what it looks... It looks like a like an end table, but like a very large one mm-hmm. that's the exact size of a dryer. It does look good though. Like it, it looks like it belongs in the image. Like it's just that it, it's nonsensical. You know what I mean? Like it, like I wouldn't, yeah. if you didn't point it out to me, maybe I wouldn't know. I mean, I guess I would cause she, I don't, I don't know why there's a pizza box there, but it does look like it's in, like it was originally there. It doesn't look like tacked on. Right. I got a punishment. I say uh viewer challenge, Try to make a pizza in a clothes dryer. See how long it takes. You know, put it on two hours and see, you know, maybe the pizza will be cooked by then. But don't get inside because that's dangerous. I don't, I think get inside, 
get a little burnt and then sue Disney and tell them you saw it in a movie that they made. <laughs> and they have the money too. I think yeah. that, that's actually a great point because I think we should take all of these lessons we see edited out from Disney movies and then set, uh, sue them and say, oh, mm-hmm. I bought this movie on DVD. I'm a, right. I'm a, I'm a physical media fiend. So I was watching right. this older film on DVD and it taught me to crawl into the clothes dryer and I, mm-hmm. uh, I, I burned my arms and legs. Yeah. I, I need $10 billion. <laughs> yeah. Or I was, uh, I was watching this old movie and uh, a cat and a mouse were hitting each other on the heads with hammers and I'm, I killed my best friend. Uh, <laughs> you owe me $10 billion. Yeah. You know what? And you can, you can give them a good deal too. You can be like, I want $10 billion or you can let me play. And then whatever Marvel character you're really into, you can be like, I want to be the next, you know, uh, uh, fucking Howard the duck. And then, you know, maybe that's a good deal for them. Like, they're like, you know, we're not going to give Tom Hanks $10 billion to be Howard. So, like, we could, you know, save some money. I don't know. Do you think they're going to remake Howard the Duck and have, like, the weird duck nipples in that movie? Anybody I remember so. that? I don't know. I, I haven't seen Howard the Duck. Yeah, me neither. There's a, one, of the, one of the female ducks has breasts, if I remember correctly. Oh, I think I do recall that. It was, like, sort yeah. of like a total recall moment or something. Yeah, but, like horrific and disgusting uh let's move along here though you know we spoke a little bit about tiktok earlier i i just discovered this this account today via our uh thought cops discord oh i already saw it (laughs) (laughs) that that took a second to register i was like what the i'm like what the fuck is your problem Um, it is rude. <laughs> okay, well, there's a range. You should have known. You, that was the test. So yeah. we have a Thought Cops Discord. If you're not in it, it's a it's a it's a good old time. It's free to use. It's a great time. Just go to our Twitter account at Real Thought Cops. You can find it on our pinned tweet. Uh, but people have been posting in our Thought Cops Discord this these clips from this TikTok artist named Charmander. <laughs> Artist. <laughs> I mean, if you couldn't hear, there were big quotes over that. Oh, uh, uh, hi there. My name's Charmander, and uh, I recently learned a new trick. Uh, well, It'd be so funny if Nintendo just sues the I fuck can out of you. It's like, your name is not Charmander. We own the rights to Charmander. You owe us all of your money. Okay, bear with me here. Or should I say wolf with me here? (laughs) Okay, one second. This hurts every bone in my body. Is it ironic? I gotta, uh, not to be... I don't... Because I felt like this when I first saw 100 Gex, and now I'm a big fan, so you never know. There's, There's a complicated backstory. Okay to this. I think this is probably good enough. He's growling, crawling around on the ground acting like a wolf. What? There's like three more seconds. Okay. Oh, there it is. So this, uh, the original tweet that went viral got taken down and a person tweeted it out saying this man must be executed immediately. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> and then there were a bunch of people that were piling on saying uh this is why bullying needs to ha- like make a big comeback or oh. like bullying is what would keep this like you know in check <laughs> this type of behavior in check from what i've seen um sh- there's there's two more i don't know if you guys want to watch the other two you go ahead you sort of get the gist of it. <laughs> I-, I get a sick pleasure out of this to be quite honest <laughs> So it is I'll I'll start by saying it is a character. It's okay. not this no, guy isn't that. really yeah. Yeah. That makes me like it so much less. <laughs> yeah. When it's if you told real. me like this was this dude and this is his real life and this is how he acts in real life, I'd be like, then who the <laughs> fuck are we to judge this guy? Like, let him have fun. I don't care. He seems weird. I don't know if I'd be friends with him, but like, who gives a shit? But if he's right. like, this is my fucking art, then I uh, I don't like it. No, he definitely is. Right. He, he plays this character where he's like this... Uh, it's almost like he's a like fucking Sheldon from Big Bang Theory or something. Right. And so that's that's I sort like of where it. the controversy gets into trouble, um, mm-hmm. or where where he sort of gets himself into trouble with this controversy is 
people attributing, um, you know, this to, well, is he playing like a Sheldon character or is he making fun of like, you know, is he pretending that he's R worded, you know, sort of thing. He kind of looks like Charles Carroll a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you're right. Let's let's go ahead and play this here. <laughs> oh, ah, oh, ah, I'll pick it up. <laughs> Uh, hi there. My name's Charmander, and <laughs> I oh, guess they call me God. Charmander for a reason. <laughs> uh, you are wonderful looking. I really like your ears. What the fuck? The folds are just so soft. It, just, it hurts so much to look at. Ready? Especially this extreme um, close up. So. What do you say we kick it back at the library? <laughs> Maybe we can That's talk, get to know each other. <laughs> you said that like it was a pun. I mean, uh, yeah. study because studying is important. <laughs> Education. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, I hate how that we, uh, meet there in a couple minutes and uh, we can... That's how I'm going to start laughing like that now. Yeah, it's a weird Banjo-Kazooie impression. <laughs> 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 Okay, explain to me the tags because at the very bottom. So also, like I know, I I know I talked up POV earlier, but I think this might have ruined it for me. <laughs> right. that, is, the, the title is POV. You bump into Charmander in the hallway, and, and he immediately falls in love with you. And the wow. tags on this are hashtag Baseball Life, hashtag mm. Ultra Instinct. What the hell is he talking about? That isn't like nothing to do with the video. <laughs> I have no idea. I have a I have my my punishment ready whenever Go you off, guys want please. it. Please. Do you want it now? Well, is, should we you, should we play there's there's yeah, two I'm, more videos. Oh, 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 let's do one more. <laughs> I, this is this is harsh. Well, should should I play the should we play the apology video or because the apology video is a lot less uh, entertaining, uh, but he he nonetheless sort of does apologize for having created these. <laughs> let's watch the next two back to back. But yeah, let's let's play let's play this one. Let's see here. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Uh, so dinosaurs come in different sizes. There's really big ones, and there's smaller ones. Yeah, there's offensive. also medium sized. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, excuse me. Can you and your friend stop laughing at me? I'm no. trying to do a presentation here. Anyways, so, um, yeah. <laughs> There's also herbivores, where they only eat vegetables. And, uh, there's uh, carnivores, <laughs> where they only eat meat. And then there's omnivores, where... They eat both. <laughs> Personally, I like the herbivores because I'm a vegan myself. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> Stop laughing at me! <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, that was a lot. It's a little it, too real. It's also disturbing that like on the side of my Twitter screen watching this, it's hashtag national horny day. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, this guy is like also, a, the pr the prologue to a Batman villain, right? He's like yeah, yeah, a penguin <laughs> or something. Yeah, did you get what's the one? What's the one? For, Gotham? Had you guys seen Gotham? I have not. He seems I, like a character in Gotham because Gotham was absolute dog shit. <laughs> it was so bad. Like really bad. He'll land a roll yeah. after these videos. But you said there's a Punisher. Yeah. Not there, sorry, they said there's an apology. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth going over. Um. He, he apologizes for the videos just to sort of sum up everything that happened after the first tweet came out that said this man may must be executed immediately. And uh, he took he took all of the re the uh, the replies to that that were like, this is why bullying needs to happen. He put all of those into his uh his tiktok like into mm. a video. And then at the end, there's a video of him crying. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh boy! But then, then he so you can go to his TikTok page. It's like at underscore Andrew Curtis with two S's, and he made like an apology video saying like, "Hey, this is I created a character." He does he does like a lot of what looked to be like ballet dance moves. So I think he's probably like 
a dancer and probably some sort of actor or something like that. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I made this video. I didn't realize that it would be ableist and that people were telling me that it was offensive. And so I took all the videos down. So right now, all of the videos you see on Twitter are the only sources of where they exist. <laughs> They're not on his TikTok anymore. Nice. Well, good. All right. Well, a happy ending. Yeah, there's the punishment. Yeah. yeah goodbye. <laughs> Bye, Jeremy. <Charlie. laughs> you, you said you said you had oh, a yeah. sentence for him, right? I do. I do. I mean, okay. Look, first of all, like like we were saying earlier, you know, I I don't care that much that this exists. Like at the end of the day, if this if this is what he wants to do with his life, like yeah, so be it. Who am I? To, right. I, I don't care. I mean, it sucks that I hate it with every fiber of my being, but like, you know, <laughs> you go, that's fine. I don't have to like. I don't like most things, but um, my punishment for him. <laughs> I think that he should have to continue this character, uh, but I think that he should have to do a story arc where a scientist character comes in and he invents like a sort of flowers for Algernon <laughs> pill that makes him normal. And like, so he like, he's getting like progressively normal throughout the video until like the final video where he's just like, yeah, and I'm totally cured. But then he like finds out that like, you know, it doesn't have, it's not forever. So he slowly right. starts reverting to being Charmander again. And then I guess he like <laughs> dies or something. <laughs> I like the ending. That's like Thanks. my favorite punishment. That's hilarious. All right, moving along to something a little bit more positive. Uh, this week's Thought Cops Key to the City. Uh, mine this week goes to Newgrounds.com. Newgrounds turned 20 this week. It's pretty crazy. All, yeah. All of those, all those times, you know, we spend playing, uh, hentai dating sims, you know, scratching my head. Was that really 20 years ago? Wow. How time flies. Uh, Newgrounds had a lot of crazy. I feel like Newgrounds was the, the, the cradle of gamer content civilization because Back in the day, you know, it, it whenever I, I know, like um, when Ari Grab was on the show, he made a he was like, yeah, back in the day, whenever like someone would say the word like Mario on TV, it was like, oh my god, they said the video game thing, and like Newgrounds was like <laughs> Newgrounds had like all these like Flash animations for like Final Fantasy and Mega Man, and it was like this like underground culture kind of thing. And Newgrounds I guess, was Newgrounds was Babylon for gamers. Yeah, you could say that. Sure. Hmm. So, yeah. Uh, happy birthday to Newgrounds. Key to the city. Uh, Jeremy, do you have anything positive, cool, nice you've seen in general you want to give the key to sure. the city to? Um, I, you know, in my two minutes of, of hate, I, I gave a shout down to front-facing camera videos, comedy videos, rather. Yeah. So, I, I want to give a shout out to someone I think who does it really well. I don't know this person personally at all, but uh, SNL writer Steven Castillo is like one of the funniest video people on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's and from uh, Chicago. He's really I've seen him do stand-up. Very funny guy. His his Twitter account is at Steezus Christ, uh, S-T-E-E-E-Z-U-S-C-H-R-I-S-T, all caps, even though it doesn't matter for Twitter, but that's what it is. Uh, he's really, really funny. He had a video recently that made me laugh so hard where he took one of those like weird front-facing O.J. Simpson videos and made it look like it was him doing a FaceTime call with O.J. <laughs> Simpson, and it, it was just so funny. <laughs> so go follow him. Oh, yeah. Grant? All right. My key to the city this week goes to this uh, YouTube channel that I've been uh, following, uh, as I've said on the show before, uh, to try and keep myself sort of in line a little bit. I haven't been drinking very much. I've been drinking a lot once per week, but, you know, six days out of the week, I'm trying to keep it, you know, just, you know, keep it a little clean. But I've been watching this channel that's like how to drink and this, uh, it, it's sort of like binging with Babish except for drinks you know for mixed drinks and stuff like that and so this guy just goes through all these recipes of how to how you know how to how to create this drink from this tv show or you know the this from this tv show or how people in the 20s used to make manhattans or whatever the hell and i'm sitting here sober just watching hours <laughs> upon hours of how to how to mix different drinks and uh it's been you know it's been educational and entertaining entertaining yeah, I want to check that out. I mean, I want to, I want to drink all the drinks that my favorite fictional characters were drinking. You know, the one that got me started was uh, he did one on all of the different drinks that were in um, Cowboy Bebop, and I was like, "Oh, this is interesting." 
I want to be so, like Spike. Yeah. Making yourself a, uh, what do you call it? A prairie, uh, prairie, a prairie oyster in the middle of a bar fight. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Before we get to our final segment of the episode, Jeremy, where can we find you online? All the, all the avenues we can see your great content. Um, I would say, you know, mostly I post about stuff I'm doing at Twitter for the most part, uh, at Jeremy smiles, um, which is a username. Uh, and then, you know, hard drive at hard drive mag, Ace Watkins at gamer prez 2020. Those are the, ma- the main ones. I got two podcasts, you know, they, they're, you can find them pretty easily. <laughs> uh, it, yeah. yeah. It's all on your, it's all in your Twitter bio, right? Yeah. It's all in there. I think for the most part. There's your hub. There it is. <laughs> Until Twitter shuts us all down or whatever. Great. Uh, so without further ado, let's get to those voicemails. If you want to leave your own, give us a call. 312-788-7361. Or you can always send us an audio file at thoughtcopspodcast at gmail.com. Hit it. Hey, Thought Cops. My two minutes of hate this week goes to facial hair. The hair in your mustache that tends to grow a little bit long and curls up and tickles your nose. I hate that. You just feel it all day and you try to cur- uh, curl it down and nothing keeps tickling your freaking nose until you shave that shit. I hate that. As well as, you know, the eyelashes that fall into your eyes? Yep. And then you have to go to a mirror, take them out. So annoying. Do, do you ever wonder... How much debris must be stuck in your eye at the very back? <laughs> Just think about that for a second. That's, Imagine how much that's a shit horrifying thought. must be back there. The stuff that you don't get to take out. Imagine how much is built back up there. Think about that. <laughs> I <laughs> love that. All right. He, he See you guys. considers eyelashes to be facial hair. Like, I guess <laughs> you can't. It's not. It isn't wrong. It's right, hair it's on, on your, your face. face. Yeah. It's just like my, today, I'm, I, I'm you know shouting down facial hair, specifically eyelashes. I love That's it. That's actually a, a, a take I've never heard, but I, I agree. Fa- uh, eyelashes are facial hair. But in yeah. regards to uh, his in initial argue. point here with the mustache thing, I, I'm personally I'm I'm going through a thing right now in quarantine. I haven't cut my hair, trimmed my beard in quite some time. I'm going full quarantine maniac here and. <laughs> I'm definitely, I realized today, uh, as of this recording, I was, I was taking a big sip of a smoothie I made and I'm like, I was sucking out the extra juice from my mustache and like, like it was an instinct for me. I was like, like I get the upper, I get the bottom lip kind of yeah, yeah. sucking out the extra juice and I'm just like, well, I guess this is, this is who I am for the foreseeable future. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know what? Oh, well. <laughs> you know, you, you need a you need a brush. You need to brush it, and you need some oil, and you need some balm. Got to keep them hairs, you know, in line. Yeah, I look and feel insane. <laughs> and now is the time to do it, though. You know. Yeah. yeah. When this is all over, maybe I'll clean up. We'll see. <laughs> this is going to be the the look of the future. Hey, Thought Cops, I'm Netrunner here, and this week my two minutes of hate is video game related. So, uh, I've been playing the Final Fantasy VII Remake, and some things are bothering me. Uh, and these are in other games, too. It's not just this game. But uh, when you start moving in one direction, but something happens that causes a perspective change, so the direction you're holding on the joystick doesn't really make sense anymore. Uh, this happens a lot on ladders, so I'll hit, like, left to get onto a ladder, Jeez. and then it'll shift perspective, so I technically want to hit down to go down the ladder, but I'm still holding yep. left, and for whatever reason, that makes you go up, so now you're back up off the ladder, and it's like, oh, you cocksucking motherfucker. Okay, <laughs> and then uh, another thing is knowing how to solve a puzzle, but then the actual execution of doing the puzzle takes, like, half an hour. Uh, there's this one bit where you have to like move shipping containers with a giant mechanical hand and it's like okay I need to move that there move that there and then I can get this person to do this double step over this way but then to actually pick it up you're like right right pick it up sure put it down yep. switch arms and it's just like it's it takes like five minutes to do this puzzle that i solved in my head in like 10 seconds because it's you know 
game for babies or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's annoying. Thanks for doing what you're doing, guys. Oh, thank you, thank you. Final Fantasy VII, a game for babies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, my my version of that is, and I think we have a hard drive article about it, but when you are stuck on a puzzle for a really long time and then you look it up and it was just not a puzzle and you're like, I just didn't know that I had to walk slightly to the left. That's always the worst. Ugh. All right, he left the second one. Hey, Thought Cops, IO Netrunner here. And this week, my two minutes of hate. Oh, wait, no, I already did that. Uh, <laughs> if I had to be stuck in a Thought Cops quarantine house... Um, I'd probably pick Grant because oh, he you. could teach me in person how to lift and get swole. I could and do then that, yeah. on his cheat day, we could get real drunk and then, you know, yeah. maybe dance around the table <laughs> singing wow. sea shanties. And then when we get kind of tired, we can dance a little slower. And, you know, who knows where that goes? Uh, <laughs> oh, and then we'll start fighting because we ain't gay. <laughs> Just two men stuck together on an island in a lighthouse. Wait. I might be thinking of something else. Uh, anyway, keep doing what you're doing. Thumbs up. Thank you. I mean, not thank you. You should come to my house. I'm a blast. You can yeah. watch me play single player video games for seven hours a night. Very, uh, very persuasive. This was this was a good time to watch that movie. I hadn't seen that movie until quarantine time, mm. and it felt very appropriate. It's a very fucking good movie. Yeah. Have you seen Lighthouse, Jeremy? I have. It's very good. Yeah. I like it a lot. Uh, I saw it pre-quarantine Same. and I was at a movie theater and I ordered an alcoholic milkshake when I saw it. It was a weird combination. Man, if I could... God, I, I can't wait till this is all over. Like, I feel like I just want to go all out on experiences like that. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like all that stuff. Like, I, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day where it's like, I feel like when this is all over... It's going to be like the end, like when, you know, in history class, you hear about the end of like a world war, mm-hmm. how people just like celebrate. Like that's going <laughs> to be like start when, fucking when all each the, other. Like, yeah, yeah, when all the bars open up and all, everything and all the restaurants, people are just going to be out like the whole, the whole world is going to be out like just partying and just all the sharing and merriment and everything like that. Yeah. It's going to be great. Like, I, I'm looking forward to it. Population's gonna explode five times the current rate. It's I wanna, I wanna, I wanna go to a movie theater and order an alcoholic milkshake again instead of having to make him at home <laughs> by myself. It's gonna be weird. I feel like everyone's gonna feel like they're on a first date, and it's gonna be like, like we're all gonna be awkward. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, do do I sit here or? Right, yeah. <laughs> I don't wanna feet. mess this up. Yeah. Do I do I order from you or do I go up to the bar? I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> Hey, Thought Cops, what's up? What's up, man? You know, oh, I I have my window open. Maybe you can hear it in the background. Yeah, we can. This construction workers um, using a stone saw. (laughs) All right. You know, my two minutes of hate is like Instagram (laughs) thoughts, Instagram hoes, bitches. All right. (laughs) Uh, Like using their ass cheeks to sell me uh, like fitness drinks. (laughs) Jesus. Well, not me specifically, but, you know, I look at the pictures, so... Right. <laughs> of course, I yeah. guess, to me. Um, well, I mean, they sell it to, to girls with... Yeah, girls that may, are made to feel inadequate by girls that hit the genetic lottery and maybe, maybe... Sick Freud over here. You know, these, these girls <laughs> don't really try like to a, turn it know, around on them. <laughs> it started off with, ass, I buy too much shit because, because of butt pictures. And, now it's like, and also, it's bad for women in society. <laughs> Very progressive thinking. <laughs> and, you know, I just want to look at some ass cheeks in peace and not be, not be so Today is something. National Horny Day, so I guess this was the day to do it. Really this guy's horny every month. <laughs> <laughs> cheeks on Instagram. <laughs> all right, um, <laughs> all right. My punishment: all these these Insta thoughts, bitches, hoes. Uh, how is, this was for a moment an attempt at a natural, feminist message. I mean, some of, some of them have a surgery or something, but you know they oh, lose their ass and they actually have to like. Yeah, that's right. Earn it. Let's clap for the healthcare workers who take away the asses. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. All right, all right, fellas. Well, that, that was easy. Keep it up. Thanks. Take it easy. That's what I was trying to say. Peace out. <laughs>
Thanks for keeping the voicemail tame this time. I'm glad we didn't have to cut this one. <laughs> hey, you know what? You know what I want it. We should all do. We should all go to church. Huh? And we should shake hands and hug each other. Oh, because, I get like, it. The government is like oppressing us. They 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 hate us. Um, coronavirus isn't even real, man. Like it's just a conspiracy. <laughs> Um, we should just, like, live our lives, man, um, and go this to church. This is really insider baseball, no, I'm not but... Christian, but we should still go to church to, to, to own the libs, you know? Get oh, like coronavirus I'm on and board. survive. I'm convinced. To own the libs. I didn't know that Ash from Pokemon listened to this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of Pokemon in this episode. Yeah, seriously. Smell you later. <laughs> na, 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 All right, she left another one. Okay. I'm so fucking mad. Out of both the state of Wisconsin and Illinois, basically all my pets are killing. But Michael Bloomberg can buy another... This is the quality of, like, when you find uh, exposition dialogue in a video game. <laughs> You're like, I don't know how Horizon Zero Dawn happened, but now I know a little bit more. I'm so mad. I just want my fucking Trump books. I want my tax return. I barely need it either, because I don't pay taxes like a fucking plebeian. Wait, so... Your opinion is that because you shouldn't have to pay taxes, and the fact that you don't means that you're sad that you're not getting your tax money back. All right, well, is that it? <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> hey, everybody! Thanks for listening. That's been another episode of Thought Cops. Jeremy, thanks so much for coming on, man. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. It was a blast. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it. Uh, go ahead and follow Jeremy on social media. Check out the hard drive. It's an incredible website uh, if you guys want to leave your own voicemail give us a call 312-788-7361 or you can send us an audio file thoughtcopspodcast at gmail.com and if you feel like supporting the show throw us a few bucks at patreon.com slash thoughtcops we'll see you next time stay safe stay safe